we have totally forgotten that because so much time and energy is given to those things that the other part of us is almost dead. So much time is spent on material, um, possessions, um, consumerism, oh, yeah. hedonism. Mm -hmm. We seem to spend so much time, but not on developing our own spirituality. And the truth is, we are more spirit than we are flesh. Yes. Yes. <laughs> and again, it's a lack of understanding That's why of the very constitution of the human person. If we look at the beginning of the book of Genesis, when God said, let us make man in, his own, in our own image and likeness, he never left us a powerless being. He said, I crowned you with power and glory. I gave you authority and dominion over all the works of my hands. Go forth, multiply, fill the earth, and conquer it. But of course, we talk about filling the earth as just mere procreation. We do not see it as our integral role to develop creation, to continue the work of God. And in Psalm 8, David asked the Lord, what is man that you are pursuing him like this? And of course, he got a very surprising answer. Boy, I've only created you a little less than myself. And I've given you every power, authority, and dominion over all the works of my hands. I'm glad you've brought up the whole question of spirituality. Um, I think a lot of people are somehow intimidated by that terminology, spirituality. Mm -hmm. And if I were to ask you, how would one, because while we live in a Christian society, generally, generally, Christian we presume, society, we presume. Um, I get the distinct impression, even among my peers and, and my contemporaries, a lot of them don't go to church. A lot of them are not interested in the things of the church. A lot of them don't go to confession. They believe we're not going to confess to any man. They're not going to confess to any priest. A lot of them come to church, but they don't go to receive Holy Communion. I mean, what is this? I, I, I can just go across the street to Derek Walcott Square and, and confess my sins. And you get all of those things. There's a lot of confusion. Precisely because man lacks a center which God has given him, but he is denying that center. But how does he get that center? How does One, he get to that point? If you do not allow yourself to be taught, if you do Humility. not allow, that's correct, if you do not allow yourself to be taught, to be guided, to be led, how can you know what it is that you should know? Uh, again, as Catholics, as Christians, not many of us have understood the depth and the meaning, the purpose, the mission, and the vocation that is mandated to us at baptism. It is not just a naming ceremony. It is becoming an altus Christus, to live a life ipse Christi, meaning that you become another Christ in the world, and you're called to live a life that is just like the life of Christ. You are no longer an independent individual when you are baptized. You have handed over your rights mm -hmm. to God to be guided by Him. There are two things that are mandatory in the sacraments. Unless a man is born again of water and the Spirit, unless he is baptized, unless he is made over spiritually, he cannot intellectually enter. and spiritually, mm -hmm. he cannot enter the kingdom of God. And unless you eat my body and drink my blood, you shall not have life within you. How on earth can you dismiss what is the source and summit of your faith mm -hmm. and your life and expect to grow, to have power? It's because you have depleted that source and that center that you are grabbing now at what you think may give you power, but it's a lesser power that does not lift you up, not transform you, but rather put you in a very 
debased, subhuman, and destructive situation. Everestus, would you say that um, spirituality um, for you was easily attainable? What sort of challenges you had along the way? I think from a, from a very early age, um, I've always wrestled the questions of the purpose of life. And I, that has focused me all along the way. And, you know, you have to ask yourself, you know, whatever talents you have, you certainly didn't give yourself that. Whatever talents you have. So they ask you, where, where did they come from? And that's why humility is such a great virtue, to recognize you are not it, and there's something bigger than you that, that is accounting for the person you are. Um, and sometimes I think people need to spend time doing this. Sometimes we can get so caught up in everyday life and just the... But you need those quiet moments to reflect on what is this all about? Did I just come here, born, okay, you go to school, you get educated, you get a job, you make some money, you bought a car, you bought a house, and you die? Does that make sense? It cannot. And to me, I come to understand now that your life has no meaning, really, if it's not given in trying to build the family of humanity. It has absolutely no meaning. Everything is a waste of time. Because you have been given a life, and the least you can do is help to build a life, to perpetuate the life that was created in the first place. Yeah, let's have our first break. You are viewing Mr. Chairman. I'm David Samuels, and uh, with me is Father Lambert St. Rose. He has authored this new book, In Turbulent Waters, and he is joined by Mr. Evaristus Jamari a colleague of his. Stay tuned, St. Lucia. We'll be right back. It's here now. Coca-Cola, Sprite, and your favorite icy flavors in the new attractive and economically priced 355 milliliter package. This package specially designed to ease the squeeze and give you, our loyal customers, another more affordable choice in our selection of drinks for everyone. Quench your thirst with enjoyable and refreshing Coca-Cola, Sprite, and icy beverages. Available at all wholesale and retail outlets. Suggested retail price only $1.35. Dubalay's Bottling, home of a drink for everyone. Anyone knows where we can get money to pay for daddy's hospital bill? Don't worry, Granny. Just fix it. You know, we too are trying to get money for repairs and renovations, but we just don't know where. Daddy, just fix it. Honey, nothing's broken. We're just looking for a place to get money at a reasonable rate. I know, Mommy, and that's what I'm saying. Just fix it. At FIX, we provide a wide range of affordable loan facilities that are tailored to fit the needs of everyone. From personal loans to equity financing, whatever your needs, we can fix it. FIX, a company you can trust. Okay, it's um, Salt Rush Limited. Salt Rush Limited, um, my name is Carlos Noel. We specialize in clean energy. Um, what we're demonstrating right now is a hydrogen fuel cell system. Um, which, is, which uses mainly water. We extract what the hydrogen from the water, feed it into a, into a fuel cell, and you get the power out of it, which is electricity. We're actually building systems from 5 watts to 100,000 watts, which could power your home, your factory, or anything in that matter. Anything that operates off electricity, we could power it off a fuel cell system. Shine, shine, shine. What kind of equipment would you need to do that? Well, you would need the, the fuel cell system and the hydrolyzer. The hydrolyzer is a system that extracts the hydrogen from the water and um, pumps it into the fuel cell system. Hello there, welcome back. I'm David Samuels, Mr. Chairman. It's our first program for the new season and we are absolutely thrilled that you've taken time off to be with us this evening. We will be opening the lines in just about 10 minutes and uh, the telephone number is 451-9349, 451-9349. We always appreciate your involvement in our program. 
Now, in your opinion, what do you think is the most compelling story of all the stories that you have written here in this book? Just name one, and please, <laughs> only one, and the same to you, Everistus. I think it is the story about Gina, okay. Harrier, and Evita. When these, three, when these three people appeared before me, my first reaction was to run because they looked like mere puppets. Their eyes were riveted into their sockets and they looked more like graphite, more than a living human eye. And there, was, there were the three persons sitting right opposite me and the one who was more entrenched into this thing was as morbid as a piece of rock. And she was terrified of me uh, just as much as I was terrified of her. Her looks were like lances, spears, just digging almost into my being. And um, as I listened to their story, she went into a trance and began babbling in, in many different voices. And I was like, oh, oh, I'm not prepared for this one. Not prepared for this as yet. So gradually I had to pray in a sort of scotavosis, a very low voice kind of thing. And then suddenly her mouth was completely locked. Nothing would come out of her mouth. And no matter how much she tried to utter something, it wouldn't come out. The spirits locked her mouth. The other two, having gone through this journey and were partially initiated into this, were able to tell of some of the experiences that they had. And it was quite graphic, quite intimidating. And it was like, holy cow, this is a lot to swallow, a heavy and bitter pill in one meeting. And then I said, could we just stop here? Let me just say to you that this is going to be a pretty long journey. And each time we met, it was an escalation. Over a period of a what period, time? Almost six months. Okay. And of course, they did not have that patience to wait. I mean, I agreed with them because there was so much in them. There were so many backup spirits. You take out a whole set today because at one time they were communicating with some spirits that told me, these are good spirits, Father, and they're telling us, they're guiding us to come to you. And I said, there are no good spirits. <laughs> there are no good spirits. They are misleading you. Mm. And as we went further and further, they misled them. They got, in, they got engaged in all kinds of sexual promiscuity, abortion and the like and so forth, because they were gradually being initiated into the cult. And that went on for quite a while. And finally, one day we had an extensive exorcism prayer said over them, the official prayer of exorcism of the church. And the main one just went right out. And at the end of the prayer came out of it, and there, was, there were three smoke columns that just came right out of her body and gravitated across the room and out. I mean smoke? Smoke columns. Came out of her body? Came out of her body and just gravitated across the room. It was like, whoa, what on earth is happening here? I mean, I never had this experience before, you know? And the people who were in there assisting were petrified. And I said, focus on the blessed sacrament. 
just lift her up and lift me up. That's all. What do I'm you mean asking. by the people who were there assisting? Clearly, you need to have some support. You need to have a prayerful support, prayerful support right. around you. You yes. cannot tamper with this yes. on your own. There was another time she started to wiggle and squirm on the ground. And then we, she said, something is coming out of my loins. And we said to the other two, I think you better take her to the bathroom. And of course, they came back with some long things that look like cotton wood. I was like, where did that come from? It was like, oh my God. You know, this was indeed terrifying. But on the day the three columns of smoke gravitated, at the end of the session, the telephone rang. And hundreds of miles away from here, three members of the cult had dropped dead. Hundreds of miles away. Hundreds of miles away yeah. from St. Lucia. As the power of prayer, right? The power of prayer. Amazing. Amazing story. And I don't want to deal with this anymore. Yes. <laughs> yes. You, do, you don't have the energy for I it anyway. I don't have the energy for this anymore. Yes. How about you, Christian? Well, it's, it's Gina. Um, but it's a specific story about mm -hmm. Gina, where Gina has been handed over to the high priest and high priest, priestess. And she's been, her womb is being used as a farmyard for fetuses to conduct black masses. I mean, it just shows the, the privity, the extent to which people are prepared to go. Hold that on that thought. I suspect we have somebody on the line already. Hello? Hello? Hi, how are you? I'm good, I'm good. Okay, um, we were not quite ready, but go right ahead and oh, make your contribution. Okay. No, go right ahead, go right ahead. But I guess I'm just a little eager. Go right ahead, go right <laughs> ahead, ma'am. Yes. Yes. Um, I'm quite interested, I'm very curious, very fascinating. Um, everything that's going on. I've had experiences, not in St. Lucia, um, when I lived abroad um, with exorcism and and just prayers and casting out demons and whatever. And it was very scary for me. Passing out what? Casting out demons. Casting from, out demons. Yes, okay. from people. But one of the things that I've always found curious, I have a very, I'm a very curious person. And now that the, um, Father St. Rose is talking about it, I found it, it came back to me. When these demons come out, and these beings and these columns and this greenish whatever because that was my experience this thing came out all greenish and whatever oh, wow. when these things come out to my mind my lay mind they're looking for another vessel mm -hmm. what happens I, I've, I've always found i've always wondered what happens when this being comes out of one vessel so you release a person from these unnatural spirits and then they go out there somewhere where do they go and are they searching for another vessel oh, yes. and how do we capture that and send it back to the realm <laughs> to which it belongs and that kind of thing so that's my concern i haven't heard anything um with regard to that and even in my experience as i said abroad i i never got the answers for that like where where did where do these beings go thank you very much thank you yes. actually my dear Caller, you may not have read the book, and I think it's time that you try to get a copy. Mm -hmm. Available at all the bookstores in Castries and North. Now, <clears throat> I was a neophyte in this when I first started. And uh, there is this chapter on Sulphur Tara Town, when during a wave of the cross one night, I sauntered into the house of this particular individual. And there was the individual right in the middle of a satanic rite and of course when i started blessing the home people outside began screaming their heads off because they had recognized the spirits of their dead relatives leaving that home now i didn't have a clue as to what to do <laughs> and that night when we went back to the church that one person who was following me was struck down and they had to rush her back to the church for prayer and whatever it was until our return. And of course, when I got back to the presbytery that night, the pastor asked me, what did you do with this spirit? And I said, was I supposed to do something with it? 
He said yes, he was supposed to send them to Jesus. Just hold on, we have some callers, people is mm -hmm. backing up, so um, your accounts and stories, mm -hmm. you'd have to be very, very brief. But we have Thank a San Susi caller. Hi, San Susi, good evening, thanks for calling. Good evening, Mr. Chairman. Hi. Very small voice. Good evening. We can't hear you. Pardon? We cannot hear you. Speak okay, loud. Good evening. Hi. Good evening. I would like to say the show is going great. You <laughs> are doing awesome and the show is very, very, very interesting. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. That's a young fan there, yes. obviously. Yeah. Um, well, little... during the night, I mean, we were spending the night in the chapel, and at one point, we were almost falling asleep when things walked in there, and we felt like somebody was blowing a whistle into our mouths, and went from one person to another, you know, and people barely had time, just brush it away. Mm -hmm. And then the pastor said to us, that's what's happening, the spirits are coming back. Mm -hmm. So all we had to do was to stand in prayer, and invoke the name of Jesus and send them back to Jesus. That is where you send them. Let Jesus deal with them. He will know how to put them to rest. Now, you did not um, finish your, your account. Um, because Gina. It, yes. No, uh, I was saying, yeah, I was making reference to uh, the, the part of Gina where she was being, her womb was being used as, as a, a farm. farm. Yeah, in that she was, uh, she was being pre impregnated and then the, 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 the fetuses were aborted so they could be used during a black mass. Wow. Grosley, thank you so much, Grosley. Thanks. Thank you so much, Hi, good night. How are you guys? Not too bad at all. I would like to suggest that you turn down your um, television because I am hearing some feedback. Okay. It's and I'm actually zero. hearing my voice coming back at me. It's, it's, it's down to zero now. Okay, then. Thank you so much. You're on the air. Hi, hi, folks. Um, Hi, Father St. Rose. Hi. Everett? Yeah, hi. Hi, hi. Um, maybe you might catch a voice. Okay. <laughs> An old answered boy. Okay. <laughs> okay, um, I know, I know who it is. <laughs> I just wanted to just um, say, you know, you know, many people dismiss those things, um, but I've had um, some direct experiences, and I okay. actually won in the Lance Road area, and it's recorded at the fire service, mm. so much so. Um, it was, I think it was my last year at St. Mary's College. Mm -hmm. And a group of us, uh, I won't call the guys' names, including <laughs> one of the guys from Lance Road. Uh -huh. uh, we came from having a good time. And we started down the highway, and I was, I was the driver of the vehicle, and I was supposed to have dropped off.